We here at the Game and Saloon Rift Tracks always support any and all that are involved in the creation and distribution of any show we feature, and we'll encourage any of those watching to support the official release. Thank you, and enjoy the show. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the Game and Saloon Rift Tracks for October 26, 2013, with your host, BaseWare2448. And ramp it up, Slon. Another week, no Glock. Yep. And he was here last week! <laughs> My computer here. hates Google Hangouts. Jeez. Oh, oh dear. It's not showing me how we usually swap back and forth depending on who's talking. It is not showing me that, so I'm really just banking on the fact that it's doing it and kind of just rolling with it. It is because I have the stream page open. Kind of. Yeah. Now, it's a, now it's a white screen. Okay, now it's back. Oh, boy. Bear in mind, folks. Things might break this week. Kind of badly. I'm just hoping nothing broke last week either. I just skipped to two random points and everything was fine. I'd have to sit down and actually listen to the entire episode just to make sure nothing broke in the middle of the episode, but... Yeah. <laughs> Alright. We're continuing yeah. our look at, wiz look at Wizard this week off last week's debut to Flame Dragon and the Phoenix slash Haruto's backstory two episode arc. I can't do it like Decky where everything's a two episode arc. <laughs> <laughs> It'll be fine for now, but once we get like into like the late thirties, early forties, I can't do that anymore because it's like I ah, it's things. Uh... They all kind of blend together. Really not going to help if we ever look at fully at Gaim because let's see, four episodes and none of them are two part. None of them are two parts. They're just yeah. kind of continuing story from one to four, as far as I know, and into five now. But they don't make it a bad show. No, it just makes it terrible to try to categorize the episodes. Oh yeah. <laughs> All right, this week we're looking at 10 and 11, National Security Bureau, Section 0, and the promise to defend. Oh, so we actually get to learn about the mysterious group. More like one guy, but yeah. <laughs> So, any thoughts going into this week? Mm, not really, because I'm kind of keeping myself open to this right now. Yeah. Um. Uh, yeah, we're gonna learn about the one guy from Section Zero, and I think that's about it for the organization. <laughs> well, we got this one guy who's just gonna be the person. For section zero for the show to from here till the end. Granted, he will be important. Esque. He'll be important like twenty some odd episodes from now. <laughs> that many? Probably, I don't remember the, exactly when he kind of pops back up for a very, for an important part, but yeah. Anyway, I'm trying to think of anything else to say about this two-episode arc outside of the one thing that's going to be in here because it's uh, I believe it's going to be in here. I think. 
No, it's not. It's uh I'm looking. Yeah, it's next week. Uh, I'm not say what so be ambiguous, but you can probably figure it out from what we said at the end of last week's episode. <laughs> Um, talk about game for a bit if you want to. We can. Since we <sighs> tried to yesterday and then realized that, yeah, we're going to get wrapped <laughs> into that. Yeah, we kept talking and then all of a sudden it's 1 o'clock. <laughs> After we ended streaming. Bear this in mind. We were on for what? Two, way out, two hours after, no, 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 an, an hour after we were done streaming talking about game. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I still be. say if our convoluted idea happens at the end of game, that is going to be just like a wow callback yeah, moment. <laughs> well, the the one room, the, the second room I read to you, I read off to you. Um. Guess what? Where else I've kind of seen something like that before? Madoka Magica. Because <laughs> it's kind of got the same idea, not really, but it's that idea that the this power is extremely corrupting, and in that show, the power that they have is extremely corrupting, and I'm keeping it vague for reasons. I need to sit down and watch that show because I've only seen it through a series of reviews. Granted, they were really informative reviews. I've only seen it through a, a series of reviews on it. But uh, preview for episode four is out now, and so is the scene where Ryugen Henshin's, and there's nothing like. There's nothing like the last three episodes with, like, what the fuck. <laughs> Whether it's guy transforming, bear transforming, pine arm, or pine arm's fucking finisher. Yeah. That we don't have that. At least not yet. So there I, there ain't a, there, there's not a WTF moment so far? As far as I know, no. I've only, the only other things I've seen for episode 4 is a series of screenshots for the entire episode and nothing I spot out of there. It just seems normal for a writer show. Which is odd with Gaim. Yeah, that's kind of not what Gaim... That's kind of not been the mentality for Gaim. It's like I'm, I'm expecting something weird, a bit stupid... And I kind of have to chuckle at it, how ridiculous it is. But it's not in this week. It's it it doesn't have that. And I don't know whether I'm disappointed or just curious of like, okay, what's in this week's episode then? Because <laughs> I know generally what happens this week. Generally speaking, because Token, uh, some of the people on Token Nation have already watched the episode, and we're giving it some quick little lines about it. Hmm. Uh, and the yeah, the preview for next week's also out, but that's usually more often than not that's the first thing that comes out of a week's episode for Rider or Sentai is the preview for next week's episode. And that's usually the first thing I watch. <laughs> it's like, oh, I can see what next week's episode's going to look like before I even watch this week's episode. And here's an interesting thing that I noted, uh, because recently the episode titles up to seven, I believe, up seven or eight, were released. And here's the thing that's been popping up about Gaim from episode to episode. We have seen a new set of armor, whether it be for a new rider or an existing rider, every single episode so far. Ooh, yeah. Because episode one, we had orange arms with Gaim. Episode two had pine yeah. arms for Gaim. Three's got banana arms for Baron. Four will have grape arms for Yugen, or 
Buon, Budo Arms? Yeah, Budo Arms. Because they're using the Japanese word. Next week, uh, off the preview, we're getting another set of arms. This time for Gaim. From, I believe it was episode 6. There it is. The Pumper episode guide. Oh yeah, it's only up to, up to six. Episode six off the title hints at the introduction of another rider. Putting our account at five. So far. We know of eleven total right now. If you count everything from the toy catalogs. And the movie. Yeah, it only goes up to six. Seven is not available. On what that is. Hmm. So, at least for the first six episodes, we're getting something new, either writer or or form every week. I'm still finding this pace to just be absolutely ridiculous for Gaim. Because we're just going fast. And we ain't looking back. Yeah, because even if you sit back and think, that they might run game as short as they did decade. That's still going to be thirty different forms and or riders by the end of the show. I doubt they'll do that. I think they're doing it now just to get everything introduced because let's see, like, like I said, we have eleven riders that we know of so far. That's a lot to introduce into the show. So we need. I to would get... hope they're trying to do it that way. Yeah. I'm thinking they're trying to get everyone who's not related to energy to the uh, energy loxies right now in, get them introduced, get them going. So come next year, off of the the other rumor we were I was talking to you about before the show. So come next year when the new episodes start in, then they'll start cranking out the energy lock seeds one after the other, and from there we'll get fruit salad final form for fucking time. <laughs> I am calling it now. It's going to be a goddamn fruit salad. <laughs> uh, there is it would no be fitting. It, it would there's so no, be fitting. Because there's nothing else I can think of that would work. I'm like, let's see, apple. Maybe, but they picked the lot. But here's the thing about how they pick the lock seeds. Um,. They picked them out of the most picked them put the uh, the fruit from a what kids like the most list of fruits in Japan. So really, yeah, that that's literally how they picked it. Huh. So if Apple is going to be in here. I would think it would be one of the top ones, and I don't think they would put it as the final form. They would, if it was one of the top ones, they would have made that instead of orange, but they made orange, which makes me question: Well, what's going to happen to Apple? Because I don't think it's the final form. I'm more willing to bank my money on a fruit salad final form instead of a apple final form. Well, okay, in general. Isn't a final form a more souped up of the original form? Sometimes, yes. Other times, no. It kind of depends on who you're looking at. Double and Forze, yes. O's and Wizard, no. Huh. So unless we're going off that cycle, then we'll get there. But according to the rumor, we're already getting a souped up form of a base of the base guy suit with the energy lock seats. As the probably gonna be the mid season upgrade, so Well so that's though what I was kinda thinking, though, so because if it is one of those where it's just going to be a souped up version of his main suit 
then it would have to be something pertaining to orange arms. Yeah. But, like you just said there, if the energy locks are supposed to just be souped up versions of the current ones, yeah. then yeah, I could completely see a fruit salad lock. <laughs> or somehow he gets some special fucking device that allows him to like clip on like five different like his five like f- I don't know what his fame five, five different main... locks. Yeah, I'm, I don't know what his main locks are going to be by the end because we know he's got three. If you don't count the bike, because the bike doesn't count <laughs> as one of the locks he would hook onto this, and plus it's a flower, so that defeats the whole purpose of the theme. Yeah. Or, no, it's not a flower. It's a tree. It's pink. Yeah. <laughs> let's see. Let's see. Orange. Each go with a strawberry, and uh, pine or pineapple. Those three. Plus maybe two, three more. I would say combination of all six into some ridiculous fruit salad form because fuck it, why not? <laughs> but I thought he lost the strawberry one. Um, He's getting it back next week. Well, he's getting another one next week. Okay, I was going to say, if he's getting it back, then what the hell? They're breaking continuity there. Yeah, he's not getting it back. He's getting another one. <laughs> <laughs> that makes sense. Otherwise, kind of. I said he's getting it back. <laughs> but here's the thing with the lock seeds. Um, you know how they look in the forest, right? Yeah. They're unrefined. Well, he could just pick one and it becomes refined. I think this week is going to show that it's possible for Gaim to have multiples of his orange lock seed. Possibly. I know... Uh, Again, I'm getting the spoils for the episode, which you probably don't want me to say, but uh, we're going to see that uh, those lock seeds, just because Kota got orange and strawberry in episode one, doesn't mean that they're the only orange and strawberry out there. <laughs> so there's technically multiples of each of them? Yeah. Which is exactly like O's, how O's was, because there was at least three copies of every single core metal in existence. Well, you know, I guess in that sense, that would make sense with the crossover movie. Yeah. Because mm-hmm. you said that's alternate guy characters. With a similar yet different... Orange lock seeds because it's blood orange. Like, but, I mean, I could understand stuff like that then. Yeah. Because there's possibilities of differences coming out of the same type of lock seeds. Yeah. Oh, and another thing that got confirmed through Toy Wise because it was, annou- it was announced that if you buy anything Gaim Toy related, and um, if you're a Japanese buyer and you send in proof of purchase, you'll get the Zangetsu plate for the Sengoku driver. And I believe it's gotten confirmed right now that Zangetsu and Gaim both have the same prehension jingle that plays. Huh. Which makes sense off what we were seeing for the Sengoku driver because the plates have different numbers on them. And the plates push in. I think they push in different pins. And we've are. I think it's already been discovered. All the the rest of the jingles, like there's a rock and roll jingle, that will probably be tied to the nut riders. You know, the the riders that use the nuts, the nut lock seeds. Yeah. Yeah, because pun. <laughs> Damn you, Japan, and your goddamn use of puns. <laughs> but I think it was—I think it was like four jingles, maybe five. I, I don't remember, but there was four to five distinct jingles picked up off the Sengoku driver because 
Honestly, if you want to break the toy, all you have to do is figure out what makes noise, how the noises are picked, and use some toothpicks and go from there. That's how we knew, I believe we knew every single Switch Forza had before by six episodes in when the Forza driver came out. Because it's all a push pin <laughs> system in the, the driver, so all you have to do is push in combinations of pins for each slot and presto change we have all the switches now we now know every single switch that will ever come in the show see i think and somebody like legit hacked the wizard driver in order to find out all the noises it made and there are noises that are in the belt that are that have never been used either in show or in toy form they don't exist. Huh. So either they were cut, or they were just simply never made in as rings. One of those, it was a thought, but that was as far as it went, kind of deal. It's a thought that had a program sound into the wizard driver, but nothing, but no ring was released for the sound to activate. So it's kind of one of those possibly cut in, cut in the ring production of rings, but not soon enough for it to be in the belt. Because it's in the belt. <laughs> and it's probably also in the White Wizard Driver, because that got released in toy form, although it would tough to be... It would tough to figure out what the noises correspond to each other, because this is a minor spoiler at best, um, the White Razor Driver has different sounds for all of the rings Haruto uses. Huh. Minor spoiler, but yeah, he has different sounds. Like, uh, like Big and the Wizard Driver is Giant and the White Wizard Driver. Uh, Smell is Smoke. Uh, I'm trying to remember what else. Even the even Harto even Harto's like main form rings have different are called different. Like his flame ring is called volcano. Why? I don't know. It just is. Huh. And that's a legit I don't know because it's never shown in the show. I, I hate to take that idea away from you, but I'm just gonna do it now. It does. He the formings are never used on the White Wizard Driver. But everything in, yeah, all of the spell rings have different names. Except for the rider rings, which are the same. But yeah. And I've also found out for whatever weird reason, the wizard sword kinda can recognize that. Like you know how it can recognize copy and copy itself? Yeah. Okay, the Wizards Link Sword Gun can recognize Kick Strike. And play a sound for Kick Strike. <laughs> this is the weapon is able to recognize Kick Strike and play granted it's a generic sound effect, but play sounds like you are somehow shooting rider kicks. I don't even <laughs> And it does it for oh, all of the spell rings. Oh, all of God. them, I believe. <laughs> I think even including Special Rush. Which really doesn't make any sense. <laughs> so if anyone ever asks if you can shoot a rider kick, you can say yes. Yes. <laughs> just have Harto wraps his wrap his with start start and just scan the ring. Boom. You can now shoot I'm guessing a flame or water or air or land version of him kicking something. If I know. Uh I guess one more thing we can talk about, Gaim, is the 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 rider armors. I know we <laughs> talked about it yesterday, but I don't know how to feel about that. Because I wouldn't call it lazy. 
per se. I'm just I I don't know how to feel about it because I'm like the big hits. I go that's funny for before it folds out, but to see it fold out into their actual armors yeah. confuses me. Because I'm like, mm, half of these guys, that doesn't work. Even off guys' internal logic about how the armors fold out, it, it, it don't work like that. The yeah, other half, sure. and I really, I, I really don't see how Forza and Doubles could fall out. I mean, I could see them trying to stretch the fact with Oz and Wizard, but yeah, yeah. I mean, <laughs> I don't know. I'm. I don't know what it is, but it no, seeing it now kind of kills my interest in it a little bit because I was kind of excited for it and it would give me like, oh, I pick up the armor change figures just to have the rider armors for at least the guys I like and then I see them and I'm like, eh? But then again, I also have to go, but what would I expect? You know, what could they do differently? Is the question I have to ask myself and I'm like, I don't know. I don't know what they could have done differently. Outside of have them wear the armors, uh, what else can you do with this concept? Well, you know, what gets me—they didn't have to do the helmets for the rider arm armors. Yeah, because when Gaim's fully transformed, his head is not an orange. Yeah. He's got flame uh flame styles um red color for his eyes, which is the same for Zangetsu with Forze and Baron with those. The only one that's different is Ryugan for double, which I don't understand why they changed it. Cuz they changed yeah. it from the the default red that double has to the cyclone green and the joker purple. For respective sides, I guess just because, but yeah. Yeah, but I I think that looks stupid. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And of course, I keep going back to the Forza Rider modules that were in Gamma Ride, and I thought they were kind of cool because it wasn't just their piece of armor on whatever part he had, it was actually a bit creative with with, with it, because okay, Oz's module. It's actually Unk's hand with Oz's face where the, you know, that module symbol would be, and it shoots cell metals. Hmm. Doubles, I think, is just like this gauntlet piece that, again, it has Doubles' head on it where you would normally have the symbol for the module, and it the head splits and it becomes like this wind gauntlet thing. Oz is a, is a module of the Den Liner. Kuga has Gorham's pincers down on the bottom. Agito's actually does the whole fin flipping out thing that he does for his finisher. You know, there's those were kind of interesting, and they were only in Gamoride. We, we never got toy forms of it. Which I go, aww. Because it was actually kind of cool. But I... Uh, maybe if I, I see it a little bit more, I might warm up to it. But right now, I'm just like, eh. I don't hate it. Because I, I saw a post on, uh, on somebody I kind of go to on Tumblr just to see how he reacts to some things and he was like ah oh, they don't try anymore and I'm like really they, they, they could have just done, not done this at all because they have to literally fabricate armors that will fit all four of these riders out of the originals 
and th they just can't wear the chess pieces because that won't work. <laughs> Hell, even now that I think about it, Guy Wizard has different shoulder pieces than what Haruto normally wears for wizard form. It actually kind of looks like dragon style, but not quite. Because it's just the red yeah. crystal instead of kind of that shaped crystal within a silver piece. So there was some design work that went into this. They put effort into it. It's just the, the results kind of vary. Because I know some people do like this and some people absolutely hate it. I'm not surprised, mind you, because it's clashing designs. Either some people are just going to accept this, or some people are just not going to like it. I think the designs of it, for what they're going for, I think the end product of it, I'm fine with. Yeah. I, I just can't grasp that whole transform part of it. Yeah. Maybe once because the movie comes out, like, six months from when it's released, we'll be able to see it better. Yeah. Yeah, we have to wait six months on this movie. Yeah. I believe by that time, Guy will be like halfway through. Actually, no, it'll be more than halfway through. It'll be into like the 30s. It'll be somewhere into the 30s by then, by the time it gets released. So we have a long wait on that movie. And whatever foreshadowing it does for the series will probably have already came true. Or been completely ignored. <laughs> because usually this film sets up the appearance of the secondary writer but I don't know what the hell they do this time around like, unless they set up like the, the energy block seed guys coming in at some point which is entirely possible well, but, by, yeah. but by then they will already been in the show and it's like oh this is just their first appearance so now we get to look back on it in retrospect <laughs> and go, wow, this thing was different. Like seeing Gintro for the first, seeing Gintro and O's wonderful after you've watched the series. All you can go is, what the hell did you do to your hair? It's normal. <laughs> Why don't you have your weird pompadour looking thing? Why do you have normal hair? You don't look like Gintro, but you are Gintro. <laughs> it's so weird. That's like the weirdest. That was the weirdest look back cameo I've ever seen. Because the only thing was with Edgy's was oh the effects are different. Forze, everything's there except his hair. And it's like what? And my phone ding. <laughs> I'm sure that picked up on my mic. Yes, yes it did. No, we don't care, though. Yeah. <laughs> uh, there's not much to say about Gaim until episode 4 comes out and I do a recap and review of it. <laughs> Which, strangely enough, I always find something I can comment on before I get into that week's episode based off from last week. Because this past week, it was me not saying what pine arms was correctly because I said originally said it was a mace weapon it's not it's a flail weapon it's two different things huh. I don't know why I thought mace but that's the word that came to mind when I was writing so I corrected myself at the beginning of episode the episode 3 Rick app review before I went on to Talk about episode three, and it looks like episode four is going to continue that one thing that puzzled us about episode three. As far as I know. Hmm. Anyway, let's get into episode ten. All Wolf right. Wizard, now that we're done talking about Gam. You queued up and ready? I hope so. Okay. <laughs> I was just making sure on my hand as well that it's gonna play and not gonna be like, oh, nope, gotta, gotta, gotta spin up a bit. Oh, nah, we're good. Alright. 
It's completely fine, so ready? Yep. Alright, looking at episode 10 of Wizard in 3, 2, 1, go. Well, it it still hurts. <laughs> I I assume. <laughs> and it looks like it's not an immediate revival. It's like six hours down the road. Does he get revived? <laughs> What's funny, though, is I didn't think you could bait fire with fire. You can. It just depends on how strong the fires are. Because there is something to the saying, fight fire with fire. <laughs> Boy, he's only had the... Uh, power for a day and he's already had that many pictures. Yep. <laughs> hey. This abomination protects people, so lay off. Well, if he's an abomination, then that sounds like that guy needs to be the next person to be took out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and also, green magic stone. Totally doesn't set up what's to come in the next arc. Yeah. They really only have two versions of the little sponsor animation. <laughs> <laughs> it's one where uh, Garuda throws Unicorn, and the other is where Unicorn bucks Garuda, and that's it. No, I don't think he ever catches a phantom while he when he purposely goes out hunting. <laughs> Probably not. I bet it's more of an excuse just to leave. Yeah. <laughs>
Sure it is. Isn't that his, isn't that how all shady deals begin? What you you honestly surprised that she's here? Seriously. <laughs> what did it look like was going on there? <laughs> It looks a bit short for a gargoyle. <laughs> Is he trying to pull what Dragon does by popping, by having his head on his chest? That looks painful for him. Granted, that's probably just a suit design. Mm -hmm. Probably. Uh, Tarto, I, I, don't, I don't think you I can cut think... rock. Yeah. <laughs> Unless you want to switch to wind and try to erode him to death. Mm -hmm. Or water. That too. <laughs> uh, gonna do this. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Big hand. Smush. Aww. Yeah, going to stay away from the obvious joke I can make. Bad timing, Shinpei. I'm assuming that's a long distance. <laughs> Me too. Sure. 
Sure, you apologize. I'd love to know what the hell they're going to do with a ring. They, they don't have the driver, so the ring is completely useless. And why do you care so much about him? Uh, well, I was about to say it, but the kid said it for me. Yeah. <laughs> I love how hard I was like I'm, it's like I, I did who is this guy who's really upset at me for some odd reason Um, I don't think that can stop Haruto. I mean, we already proved that he was able to break out of the police station. Yeah. Well, if all he wants is the truth, why don't you just give him the truth? Seriously.
that's jumping to conclusions, but okay. Do you not hear Harto just be like, look, try not to take these guys one-on-one, -on -one because it won't end well for you. At least Harto knows how he's gonna be able to find him. Yeah, uh, uh, you might screw it up there for a bit. Nah, nah, it's back to normal. Hopefully. Wow, he, he wasn't even phased. We didn't even get sparks off the bullets. Hey, in stone. Say again. I said he ain't even in stone yet. Yeah. You know, maybe the NSA should try silver bullets. Yeah, those usually work better. Yeah. Hell, they work for Harto. Yeah. <laughs> hmm. I think that's the first time he's ever done the proper henshin pose. I think. Yeah, I think it has. It is. I think it has, actually. I think so far he's only just kind of used that as his in between charging at him. Yeah. Oh wow, that was impressive! <laughs>
Have time to show off Flame Dragon once again. Yeah. So this is a toy show and all. <laughs> Big sword. <laughs> <laughs> Even broke a medicine that time. I guess they just needed a big enough sword to do it. Probably should have aimed further back just a bit. Then you would have got him. Again, I think the kids jump into conclusions just a wee bit too fast, but uh, yeah, I guess emotions are catching up to him. Well, that's because he won't tell him what happened. Yeah. Well, not so far. A lot of gray areas with that guy. Yeah. <laughs> and after the credits, we get an iPhone app ad. <laughs> yeah. You know the sled, too. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> um. Huh. Oddly coincidental, considering that I now have an iPhone. <laughs> uh, Granted, I think the only rider-related app I can get is something that will read specific cards. Some Karas reader, something or another. Huh. I think. I think everything else was just... Let me look see here. Yeah, the Cardos reader. I'm guessing. Oh, the original manga, and that's it. <laughs> Yeah, but I think it's all it's working off the US app store. So it's like how like how uh, the PlayStation store set up where not everything that's truly on there is available to you. It's split up by region. Which is why to get the Battle Rod War DLC you have to have a Japanese PSN account so you can access the Japanese PSN store. <sighs> Weird, but yeah, yeah, I can. It's not really that bad. There's videos online that'll tell you step by step how to set up a Japanese PSN account. Since PlayStation Network is free for now. Yeah. Come next generation, we have to you have to pay for PSN, and I don't think many people want to pay for two PSN accounts. But any other thoughts on episode 10 before we move on to 11? Mm, 
No. I got nothing much to say until we see the second half of this arc, because the bulk of... Oh, the real meat of the story is in 11. 10 was a lot of setup. So, ready? Yep. Alright, starting up episode 11 of Wizard in 3, 2, 1, go. They're doing a fantastic job of forcing him to make a ring. Yeah, none of that. Then again, we're not supposed to hate these characters, so they, they can't do anything to truly force them. I will say, this guy's got balls for staring up the Haruto, considering what Haruto can do. Mm hmm. Haruto could probably shrink him to the size of a doll if he wanted to. I'm just kind of thinking is like when the ultimatum uh, cut-ins are going to happen for the opening. So I, I don't think we're too far away from that happening. Probably not, because it wasn't last week when we started having the infomercial for it? Yeah, last week was when we got the first uh, infomercial for it, I believe. It was on the last episode from, well, the second episode from last week. Because Glock made the comment of like, they're making a movie? And I go, yeah, but this is kind of on par. But this is what they do these days. Gr granted, I'm not that surprised because I'm so used to it by now. Well, and I'm not surprised because you've told me how this setup is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, they double right, feature. Oh. Right now... The only thing that's kind of surprised me is how quick we're moving on Gaim already. Yeah, and that's just the show. <laughs> yeah. Do you have a gate on the NSA side? Because if you don't, that ring is completely useless to you. I mean, completely useless to you. Um, I, I think they're going to notice him following. I mean, it isn't exactly that he can disguise his bike.
Those looks like some very fragile barriers. Yeah. Yeah, I don't think you guys are doing anything there. No. Silver bullets! That's what you need! No one thought of this yet. Granted, all they think is that, oh, we make the ring, we can make this work. They, they complete the whole fact of, um, only a wizard can use the ring. And by only a wizard, I mean only the wizard who's wearing a, the damn driver. <laughs> it might help if There's you steal the driver. There's two of them right now, though. Yeah. Yeah, he don't know what he's doing. Nope. He's just swinging <laughs> for the fences and hoping for the best. And that's not working out too well for him. Why should he run? Because, <laughs> let's see, everyone else has gotten their ass handed to him? Yeah, but it looks like backup's arrived. And by backup, I mean the only one that actually can kill him. <laughs> <laughs> Did he forget that there was only one of his forms that actually did anything to him the last time? I think he I think he's doing what he did last week and he's panicking. Also, um Haruto's getting played. <laughs> Uh-oh. Hold on. Oh, do you need to pause? Yes. Nope. I hit the uh, button on my phone and I went back to the home screen on accident. Oops. <laughs> yeah, I'm at the 926. Alright, oh. 
<laughs> Oops. Alright, I'm there. Alright, let's try that again. Alright, picking up from the 926 marker in 3, 2, 1, go. I love how casual they are about this. Yeah. It's like, I'll go kill off the gate. Have fun. Although I wonder how long it's gonna take for both of them to realize that Phantom and that uh Phoenix was playing them both. Yeah. You know, it doesn't help them, them trying to decoy when Medusa can see gates. Yeah. You're lucky I can carry somebody with me with Hurricane. <laughs> and the familiars to the rescue. <laughs> Okay. What, did they decombine and recombine together? Yes. Th that's something they can do. <laughs> Since they're claw monsters, and they're kind of made up of pieces, they can rearrange the pieces and become something else. So they can do their whole, tra uh, their whole Lego thing. <laughs> yeah. That's literally how they are. They're just pieces with different connectors. Huh. That was kind of the gimmick with them. And of course, they also, if you remember from when Haruto summons them, they come out on the little trays like they were pieces from a, a, a model kit. You didn't, you didn't notice that, did you? Uh-uh. 
that's how that's where the inspiration came from. I had a joke and then I lost it. <laughs> I think it's time for dragon. Yeah. <laughs> I was about to say, Arto's not screwing around this time, but no, he just goes to flame. I figured he could just go straight to flame dragon. Which he can do? Yeah, he can do that. <laughs> you had to think of whether or not he could do that. Yeah, yeah. Now hard to stop decides to stop screwing around. Okay, is it just me, or was he oddly angled at that point, right there? Yeah, it did look like it. He's just got a crap ton of those. Yeah. <laughs> now we get to see one interesting thing about when he's in uh, the dragon form, about him summoning dragon. Something and also, you, uh, he doesn't have to use the ring. Huh. I guess it's because of uh, the fact of Flame Dragon form already has Dragon's power, so... Yeah.
And Dragon is up, is weirdly cooperative, considering the last couple of times Harto's done this. Yeah. Last couple of times, Dragon did not want to let him take over. Yeah. Or that he was just like, oh, I'm just going to fight the friend. <laughs> then somebody's like, oh, well, I'm going to work with Harto on this one. Oh. Oh, time for the ridiculous kick strike. Yeah. The shootable kick strike. <sighs> Dear God, this thing's so ridiculous. I kinda love it. Unless the Phantoms want to be a dick. Just going to put that one out there. Well, he won't be targeted. Yeah. The Phantoms might be a dick and decide to attack him again, but... He won't be a priority anymore. <laughs> exactly. Well, yeah, who the hell else would put him here? <laughs> Well, what do you know? He softened up. <laughs> you don't have to make such an impressive thing because I come back. Technically, there's someone else who used the power, but we're going to just ignore that. <laughs> yeah. That That's actually a joke in Japan. Have I ever explained that to you? What? I, okay. Apparently, in Japan... If you sneeze, it means someone's talking about you. Huh. So th it was kind of that joke of like, oh, they're talking about him. So completely unaware, he's sneezing. Ah. And now we get a big old trailer for Ultimatum. Uh, okay, maybe not. Just, just, the, just the Forza part. <laughs> well, thoughts on this week's episodes? Uh, I liked it. Yeah. It kind of. Not... Oh, go ahead. It kind of doesn't seem like necessarily. It was as much. I don't really know how to say it, but more like the other weeks, we kind of had a little more content to it than this. This was a, a bit more filler-esque? Yeah. Oh, well, yeah. And a little bit more of a show-off flame dragon. Again. <laughs> 
because we we got to make sure they know we got to make sure we show off that special finisher just two more times before we move on to the next dragon form but yeah it was it was a decent to get to an episode arc it was nice. Yeah, I'm not saying it was bad. I'm yeah. just saying, compared to what we've seen, it don't feels like it's missing a little something compared to those. Yeah. It was nice for them to say that uh, Kizaki for future episodes. Too bad, like many other things, it won't be really followed up on. We'll see him again, but not for some time. And I do and mean I for bet some it time. won't really be too much of a big part like he's been this first little bit. Oh, it will be big, but it will be deep into the show when he really matters again. I believe. Yeah. I'm trying to think other than that. Flame Dragon got shut off some more. We had that last week, so there's not much to talk about there. We got to see another Underworld segment, which we're not going to be seeing them again for God knows how long. Wow. <laughs> yeah. I don't think we get another one until Beast comes in. Huh. Yeah, I don't think we get another one until Beast comes in, and he's like 20 something, and then he's at like after the 20 episode marker. So, Jeez. we're not getting one for a while. Cause I think we get one there. Actually, maybe one, maybe one or two there, and then we have one really late into the show, where the underworld is an actual plot point. For once, <laughs> like Wait, I'm not gonna lie. Something. Yeah, I'm not gonna lie. What Haruto sees in the underworld becomes a plot point. Mm -hmm. Huh. Because you know how the Underworld shows a memory of theirs? Like, a very key memory of theirs? Yeah. Haruto's yeah. going to see memory a very key memory. Huh. And it will play into the main plot of the show and become a plot point. Hmm. Never thought that actually come into play, did you? No. I was kind of surprised when they did it, too, because I'm like, wait, what? What? <laughs> But, okay. It's an actual plot point now. Um, trying to think of anything else to note about these two episodes. Not really. Everyone else was just kind of playing supporting roles. Yeah. That's why I You're, said it, it kind of feels like it's not... It's not really up to par with what we've seen. Mm. It's not bad... But it's just not up to where it's been. Yeah. Yeah. Well, next week we I can say this because it's in the damn preview. Yeah, I, I caught it. <laughs> yeah, we get Hurricane Dragon. And I don't know if I should say this or not about the Magic Stone. Should I? Mm -hmm. I guess. I think, it, I think it gets said within like the first two minutes of the next day, of next week's episode. Oh well, then yeah, go for it. Uh, Wajima's gonna be able to make two rings out of the same stone. One will be for the Hurricane Dragon ring, of course. The other will be for Hurricane Dragon's finisher, which you kind of saw in the episode in the preview. Yeah. Which will be a thing that will happen for the rest of the forms on top of the weird thing about special because you know how special is red right so you think oh it's tied to uh, flame dragon correct yeah that's not necessarily true uh -huh. I'm only going to say, just think about what Special does, and go from there. Hmm. 
Hmm. But that'll be all next week. So, until next week, that has been it for... Grand for the Epsilon. I'm Pacemaker2448 saying goodnight, everybody, and we'll see you on the next round of the Gaming Cylinder of Tracks. Peace. Out. As always, you can find the Gaming Cylinder of Tracks on our site, TGS, TGSR.DYMBNS.org. Don't forget to follow us on Facebook and Twitter. Our Twitter account is at TGS Rift Tracks, and on Facebook, you can find us at Facebook.com slash TGS Rift Tracks. Don't forget we're listed on YouTube. You can find us at YouTube.com slash user slash TGS Rift Tracks. Also, don't forget about the mobile app. It will be updated after every TGSR episode with archives for both TGS and TGSR. Till next time.